Michael Bonin. Welcome to the Tolkien Lore Channel. I'm the Tolkien Geek, and this is the third of a series of videos that I've been doing on a bunch of material Peter Jackson left out of his movies about the Old Forest and Tom Bombadil and the Barrow Downs. And I've covered Old Forest and Tom Bombadil in the two previous videos, and now I'm going to talk about the Barrow Downs. The Barrow Downs is a really interesting episode, again, that doesn't really push the plot forward, which is why it probably get left out of the movies, but it's an interesting episode because it, again, kind of shows, like the Old Forest, the hobbits are entering a much more dangerous world than what they're familiar with. And so it continues kind of that transition from, you know, we're going on an adventure, isn't that cool, to adventures are not all, you know, daisies. So let's go ahead and talk about the Barrow Downs and, and the interesting story behind all that. So let's get going. So when I left off in the last video, Tom Bombadil had shown the hobbits, this is the way you want to go, here's how you want to get there, if you run into any trouble, sing this song and I'll come help. And at first they do make pretty good time, they're going at a pretty decent pace. They make it to the top of a hill and they can see the road, or what they think is the road, from the hill. And it looks close enough that they can get there well before dark. And they're pretty happy about this given their experience with the old forest. They want to get out as fast as possible. They also want to get away from the Barrow Downs, which are, you know, very near at hand to the east as far as quickly as possible. So they're very happy about being close to the road. But on this hill, there's this stone, which the story describes as being kind of like a warning finger almost. And it seems unnaturally cool as if, you know, the, the sun just can't warm it up, which ought to give anybody pause. But the hobbits are hungry, being hobbits, they're always hungry. So they sit down to have lunch, they kind of dilly-dally for a bit. Next thing you know, they realize that they've all fallen asleep, they wake up, and it's dark. And not totally dark, the sun is going down, but it's also foggy, which makes it very hard to see. They gather up their ponies, and then they try to set off in the direction of the road, hoping that they can still make it there before it gets too late. On the way down, Frodo ends up having a fall and gets separated from the other hobbits, who then they try to kind of shout at each other to, to find out where they are to, to get back together. It doesn't really work. They actually seem to get further apart at one point, and next thing you know, Frodo is hearing shouts that sound like not so much, hey, where are you, but oh my gosh, we're in danger type shouts. And so he's desperately trying to find them. He's terrified. The shouts eventually die away altogether. He keeps searching. He's miserable. It's cold, foggy. He's trying to find them. He's just kind of gathering. He's trying to find a way through the fog. And eventually he sees something kind of looming up, like an archway or, or something like that. And when he steps through it, it's all dark. Now, of course, he's really terrified. Can't really see anything and he hears a voice, and the voice is cold, and it's terrifying, and then he just kind of passes out after he sees maybe what he thinks might be eyes or something. And then we he wakes up, and he's in the Barrow Down itself. So let's talk about what happens inside. So when Frodo wakes up, he's in the Barrow Down, and one of the Barrow Downs. It's completely dark at first. And he's sitting there just in mortal terror because he's, of course, heard stories of the Barrow Downs. He knows kind of the reputation, and he heard more about it from Tom Bombadil. So as he's laying there thinking about the dreadful fate that probably awaits all of them, he notices that there's a pale green light starting to grow. And then there's... And he also starts to hear a chanting, which is even you know worse. It means there's something around that's doing something. As he, as the light starts to grow, he realizes that Merry, Sam, and Pippin are close at hand. They're all dressed in white, and they have rings on their fingers. And there's all this, all these different treasures lying around. And by their sides, they have swords. And then there's this one long sword unsheathed across their necks, which, you know, that probably forebodes something not too pleasant. So he's laying there. He sees them, and he's just. Now he's really terrified. Next thing you know, he sees a hand, which is attached to an arm, presumably, but it's it's coming around a corner 
moving for the the hilt of the sword that's lying across their necks. And so now he's thinking they're about to get killed. And so he takes up one of the smaller swords that's lying around and he hacks at it, hacks, hacks at the hand with the sword and he actually does chop it off and he hears a scream. And at, nothing really immediately results from that, which is kind of surprising and lucky for Frodo so he's just sitting there thinking, now what do I do? And then all of a sudden he finally remembers the song that Tom Bombadil told them to sing. And so he starts to sing that song at first very haltingly, very terrifying. But as he sings it, he kind of picks up a little courage. His voice gains more power. And soon after he finishes the song, he starts hearing Tom Bombadil outside with his lusty singing voice just going away at all who knows what kind of nonsense. And the next thing you know, the door to the Barrow Downs is open. He sees a light come out from, you know, wherever the the opening is. And then Tom Bombadil comes in, sings a song, basically telling the Barrow Whites to go away and not come back till the world is ended. Uh, and he hears more screams. Basically, the idea is the Barrow Whites have been banished. And he then helps Tom Bombadil take the other hobbits out. And they're saved. So, I mean, it was a really terrifying episode, but a very short episode, luckily for Frodo, and luckily he remembered the song from Tom Bombadil. But the other interesting part about this that kind of connects with a plot point that Peter Jackson changes a little bit, in the movie, of course, Aragorn is the one who ends up giving the hobbits the little short swords that they all get. In the book, actually, it's Tom Bombadil, because Tom Bombadil goes in after the Barrow Down has been kind of cleansed, essentially, he takes out a lot of the treasures, leaves it on the hill for, you know, whatever animal or whatever comes along to pick it up. And he says that that's what will break the spell ultimately is, you know, don't take anything, but, you know, just whatever strikes your fancy and let the rest of it, you know, stay for anybody else. So, but he also does pull out short swords for or daggers, really, for the hobbits. And he basically gives each of them one of those so that they have that. And that's actually how they get those, not from Aragorn as in the movie. So anyway, after he does all that, they, you know, they basically take off the, the white robes or whatever that they had on in the barrow down. They get a new set of clothes. Their ponies had run off, but luckily um, Tom Bombadil's had <laughs> gathered them up. And Tom Bombadil's pony is actually pretty smart. And uh, so he found them, got them their new clothes, and set them on their way again. And they're finally on the way to the road. And because Tom Bombadil is worried they're just going to get in more trouble, he actually just comes along with them and takes them all the way to the road. So that is the episode of the Barrow Downs. Hope you enjoy learning about all these different little episodes that Peter Jackson left out. They're really interesting. And you sh if you haven't actually read the books and only seen the movies, you should really just you know, if you can find somebody's copy, just read the chapters because they are very well written and they're very interesting episodes. So even if you don't want to read the entire book just because it is so big, but you enjoy it, you should read those just to get more of the detail and just more of the interest of the story. So that'll wrap these this series of videos up. So like I said, uh, it's a interesting series of events. It's, again, that kind of transitional period from you know, the Shire to the greater world. And in this series of videos, I hope you kind of picked up on a lot of the, the interesting things that got left out of the movie, but are very interesting reading. So if you like the video, please give it a like, please subscribe. If you want to learn more about Tolkien's worlds or anything Tolkien did or wrote, not just Middle Earth related. And you can also follow me at JRRT lore on Twitter. And until next time, I'm the Tolkien Geek, signing out for the Tolkien Lore Channel. Namadie.